Hey, what's up? This is Richard from BlenderGrid.com with a Blender tutorial about how to create generative 3D NFT collections in Blender without using any Python. Uh, it's a whole mouthful. Um, what we're after here is we want to automatically create a whole bunch of different renders of our base avatar with a whole bunch of different attributes and we want to render out every possible combination of our base avatar with all the different attributes it can have and we don't need any python to do this we only need blender and drivers um, so that's what we're going to do I've already prepared a file with a base avatar, Suzanne in this case, and a bunch of attributes that we can add to it, like these hats that we have and a bunch of different glasses. Um, and on top of that, we can also vary the shader that Suzanne uses, because this is interesting because it's a different kind of variation. Uh, the hats and the glasses are just objects that we can turn on and off in the render uh, using this little render icon to disable or enable something in the render. The materials of Suzanne, we also want to want to vary that um, and that's a little bit different um, but it is possible to do that with drivers as well. So that's the basic setup and besides from the or aside from the base avatar and the attributes that we have, I have a collection with some render uh, objects like cameras, lights, and this background, which I'm just gonna hide for now. So uh, we're not distracted. So as you can see, we have four different hats. One of the hats is inside of a collection because it has multiple objects. So I just organized it like that. Uh, I got these objects from the Blender Studio and BlendSwap.com because I wanted to save time and didn't want to model all these myself. And also, I didn't want to create all these shaders myself, so I downloaded, I bought these materials from Ryan King on the Blender Market. Uh, again, just to save time. Um, so if we want to check these hats out, I can just disable them or uh, hide them. So we have this cap, we have a beanie, we have a derby hat, and we have a an old hat. We have party glasses, and we have sunglasses. Whoops. Okay. So the way to render various different um, combinations of these things is to just enable these in the render, disable the rest, um, let's say I want to do the derby hat. So I'm going to enable it in the render. Whether I'm uh, enabling them in the viewport doesn't really matter for the render. And then I want a pair of party glasses with my derby hat. Um, so I disable the sunglasses in the render and then I enable it here. And if I now render, we will get this uh, rendered out. Um, however, we want to automate this. So what we can do to automate this is for the objects that we can turn on and off, like the glasses and the hats, we can simply right click and add a driver here so it can drive the value whether it's enabled or disabled in the render. Um, so that's how we're going to drive these objects. For the materials, it's a little bit different. Um, I found a trick where you can simply add a very simple uh, geometry nodes setup in order to switch between these materials very easy. Um, so that's how we're going to do it. The first step is to figure out how many different combinations there are and how many different combinations we want to render. In this case, uh, I have five materials, I have four hats and I have two types of glasses. Um, but with the hats and the glasses, 
having nothing is also an option. So we have we actually have five different choices of hats because no hat is also an option. So five, and this will be three options and five shaders. So that's five shaders times five hats times three choices glasses is 75 different combinations. And um, if you add more types of glasses or add even new categories of things like something else like maybe earrings or uh, mustaches or whatever, uh, you can really explode the number of combinations that you can make. Uh, but for this example, I'm just going to keep it at this fairly low amount. Um, but 75 combinations is still a, a, a good amount and it will be very tedious to render out 75 images by hand, uh, enabling and disabling all these things. So we want to add drivers there. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. Let's actually do something. Um, so we, we figured out that there are 75 different combinations. So I want to create a frame range of 75 frames. And the natural frame range that you might think of is just starting at frame 1 and ending at 75. These are This is 75 different frames. Uh, however, for the math to be a bit easier, I'm going to start at frame 0 and end at frame 74. This is also 75 frames. Um, it just starts at 0 instead of 1. And it, it makes things a little bit easier. Okay. Um, before I'm going to add any drivers, I want to create a way to switch between these materials in an easy way. So uh, one way I found that allows you to do this fairly easily is by using geometry nodes. Um, so I'm going to jump to my geometry nodes work space. If you don't see this, um, you can uh, hit the little plus icon and go to general and click geometry nodes to add this workspace. So here with Suzanne enabled, I'm going to hit new. This will add a new geometry nodes um, setup where we simply have an input node and an output node in case you're not familiar with geometry nodes. Um, and this takes the geometry of Suzanne and it outputs the same geometry so we, we don't see any difference. Um, the only node I want to add here is I'm going to search for material and I want to set the material index. That's all I want to do. And I add it in between. And now this node takes the geometry and it's for every piece of geometry, I think every face of this Suzanne model, it will set the material index to zero. And then it takes that uh, geometry and, you know, you get the output. So the only thing I want to do here is I want to expose this material index to the, uh, the actual modifier. So I'm going to drag it in here, and now we have this material index. And if we check out our modifiers, this is a subdivision. I'm just going to uh, minimize that. Um, now we have a material index, and for some reason it's already adding, adding a driver because I've been playing with this before. Um, I'm going to disable that. Now we have this material index, and we can switch this to all the different materials in the the material slots and I have uh, choices from 0 to 4 because I have 5 different materials so anything beyond 4 doesn't do anything but this this gives us a value and guess what we can add if we right click this we can add a driver to this so now we have a value here to drive all the materials and we can drive all the renderability uh, settings, the, the disable in renders setting of all the objects that we want to enable and disable over the course of our frame range. So let's go back to our default workspace. And now I have this, uh, yeah, I have this option to change the materials. Okay. All right. Um, the way I want to organize this um, in order to to really cycle through every possible combination of things, um, 
I want to organize this and I want to start with switching the materials. So I want to uh, loop through these five materials over the course of our 75 frames. So the first um, 75 divided by five is 15. So the first 15 frames, I want to use the first material, the car paint. The next 15 frames, I want to use my sponge. The next 15 frames, I want to use this kind of candy material, uh, etc. So, so we will we will divide our 75 frames into five sections, and every section has uh, a new material. So the way to do this is we want to use the frame in our driver. And a very easy way to do that is by uh, hitting any value and then typing in hashtag frame. This will make it uh, purple, which will set the value to our frame. So what this does is the, force, the first five frames, it will switch materials automatically. So that's where we can start seeing some automation happening. Uh, and if we render this, if you render an animation, uh, it will start, it will render uh, these five different materials over the course of the first five frames. Um, but what I just said is I want to spread this out over 75 frames. One way to do this is to take the frame and divide it by 15 because Instead of one frame per material, we want to have 15 frames per material. So the, the car paint, the first material, should be the first 15 frames. And then the next material should be the next 15 frames. So we, we're pretty much slowing this rate down by 15. And that is what happens now. And as you can see, um, the material index is zero for the for frame zero to fourteen. Then when we when we hit fifteen, it becomes one, because um, what this does is actually fourteen divided by fifteen is zero point nine something. Um, but this material index can only be an integer; it cannot be a floating point value. So it will take any. Um, any numbers after the floating point and it will just set them to zero. So 0 0.9 is zero. Um, and if you want to do this the proper way, you can you can divide it with a double divide sign, which makes it actually um, anything above, say the, the, the end result is one and a half, it will make it one. It will, it will just remove anything after the period. Um, and that is a little bit of a Python trick, actually. So I, I promised we're not going to do any Python, but you know, this is a way to set the driver. But it works in any, any uh, regardless of whether you do that or not. So now we have our five different shaders being switched automatically over the course of 75 frames. And that's exactly what we want to do. Okay, so for the hats, it's a little bit different. We don't have a single value that we can just uh, change from zero to whatever number of hats we have. Uh, we actually have um, the render setting being either disabled or enabled. So it's kind of like a Boolean value. It's, it's either zero or one. Um, if you right click, um, this render value of our cap, you can see there's no way to set um, a driver here. However, if you right click the, the beanie, for example, there is a way to set a driver. The only reason for that is that the beanie is an object and a cap is a collection. Um, and I haven't really found a good way to do this. So instead of setting this renderability, we have to do it for every single object in our cap. And it sounds a bit tedious, but it's not that bad because we can just set the driver for one thing and then just copy and paste it to the other objects in this cap collection. Okay. 
Um, as I said before, having no hat at all is also an option. So what I want to do here is over the course of the first 15 frames, I want to, I want to loop over every possible hat choice we have. How many hat choices do we have? We have four hats and nothing. So that's five. And we have 15 frames that I have to loop over. So that's zero to 14. And then when we hit 15, we want to start with uh, the beginning again. So we want to just repeat that five times. So over the course of 15 frames, again, I want to loop through every single hat combination. And I want to start off with no hat at all. So the first, if you divide, if you take 15, you divide it by five, you have three. So every single hat combination is three frames long. So zero, one, and two should be nothing. Then one, sorry, three, four, and five should be our cap. Um, and then we loop through every single hat we have. All right, so in other words, our cap should be um, invisible for every frame except three, four, and five. Okay, th this is gonna be a little bit complicated, but um, I'm gonna take my top part because it's the biggest. Um, well, actually, we're not gonna see anything, so it doesn't really matter which object I start with. I'm going to set the render ability for this object. And I want to make it only visible for frame three, four, and five. And the rest of these 15 first frames, it should be invisible. Um, okay, the first step is to right click this and add a driver. Now you can see here we have an expression and we have this variable we don't need this variable so we can just hit this x and uh, all we need in terms of a variable is the frame so if i uh, set this to the frame let's see what happens current uh, driver value as you can see here is 14 because the frame is 14 and as you can see it is disabled and if we cycle through the frame range you can see now it becomes enabled. So apparently if this value is zero, it's enabled and anything other than zero, it's disabled, which is interesting. Um, instead of being zero for only one frame, I want it to be zero for three frames in a row. So how, the, the way we slowed down the shader uh, before is dividing it by 15 because we wanted to have it switch every 15 frames with the hats I want them to switch every three frames So I'm going to edit my driver and divide the frame by three We're going to just do this step by step. So right now the driver value is 1.3 um, And as you can see the first three frames now 0, 1, and 2, we have the cap, uh, we have the object being rendered. And then the rest, it's all not being rendered. And again, if you want to, want to do this the proper way, I'm going to add it to the driver. And right now we have a driver value of 0 0.333, which ends up being 0. But we can do this directly by adding a double slash uh, to immediately take only the, the value before the dot, before the point. And that is doing the same thing. Okay, so instead of the first three frames, we want this thing to be uh, rendered the, the second set of three frames. So instead of zero, one, two, we want it to be rendered uh, at three, four, and five. So the next step is to edit this driver. And for three, four, and five, the value is one, but we want it to be zero. So we have to just subtract one. That's all we need to do. 
Okay, now going back from frame zero, it is Okay, apparently, when the value is minus one, it's also being rendered. Which is interesting. Um, I didn't expect that, but it doesn't matter because the next step, what we do in the next step, we'll um, kind of ignore that. Okay, um, so it's, it's getting a bit complicated. Um, at three, four, and five, our cap is being rendered. And then after 3, 4, and 5, it's not being rendered anymore. What we want to have happen is when we go to the next shader here, this sponge material, um, starting at frame 15, we want to have 15, 16, and 17. We have we want to have no cap. And then from frame 18, we want to have we want to see the cap again because we haven't seen the cap on the sponge. Uh, we, we've only see it, seen it on the car shader. Um, so we want to kind of loop every 15 frames. We're going to repeat this whole thing. All right. So. All right, I'm going to edit this. And I'm going to take this entire thing, put it in parentheses. And I'm going to percent five because we have five different hat choices and what this does is when this hits um when this is one it's it's kind of dividing by five and it one it only divides a full amount and then whatever whatever is left that's the answer um, so it's probably better to give you an example. When it's 1, 1% one 5 is 1. 5% 5, five is 1, you can divide 5 by 5, and then you have 0 left. So 5% 5, five is 0, and then 6% 5 is 1 again. So it's kind of looping. So if we do this, this should be the final result that we're after. So as I, as I scroll through the timeline, you can see it's sometimes turned on and sometimes it is not. So the first three frames, it is turned off. Then from three, four, and five, it is being rendered. And the rest, it's turned off again until we hit frame 15 when we switch materials. 15, 16, and 17, it's turned off. And then 18, it should be turned on again. 19 and 20, it should be turned on. And then it's turned off again. So it's kind of just blinking. If you play this back, you can see it's just blinking for three frames and then it's turned off. So if we if we just copy this, copy the driver, we can paste it onto the rest. And that should do it. All right. Now is probably a good time to also, instead of only disabling this object in the render, we also want to ena want to enable and disable it in the viewport so we can see what's actually going on. So now is probably a good time to look at um, well, how can we uh, how can we hide and show um, an object in a viewport using the hide and show uh, little icon here? But if we right click this, we cannot set a driver here, so that's unfortunate. However, we have another setting called viewport um, disable in viewports, and this is very similar to the disable in render. Instead, it just do, does it for the viewport. So it's almost the same as hiding the object. Um, but instead of hiding, when you hide it, it's still kind of active and it still can contribute to calculations and stuff. Um, let's just not hide it, but instead disable it in the viewport. And as you right click this, as you can see, uh, you can add a driver here. So let's copy this driver and just paste it in here. And a quicker way to do it is right click and hit P. 
All right, so now we both disable it in the viewport and in the render, which is just a useful way to see what the heck is going on. Here you can see the first three frames, we have no hat. The second three frames, we have a hat. And then when we switch to the next material, we do the same thing. And when we switch to the next material, we do the same thing. Um, and so what's next is we want to add these other three hats uh, along the, the rest of these 15 frames and then loop them the same way. The easiest way to do that is to simply, again, copy the driver. It was already copied probably. Um, and just paste it in. Now it's doing the same thing as the, the regular cap that we have, uh, which is not what we want. Is it? It looks like it is not working. Hmm, weird. A few moments later. Okay, I'm gonna copy one of these drivers. I'm gonna paste it in. Strange. Um, I'm just gonna edit the driver and see what happens. Okay. It should be fine. So instead of subtracting one, because that was the first hat, we're going to subtract two, because this is the second hat. And let's hope this works. Let's copy this driver and paste it into the viewport as well. And it works. So first three frames, we have nothing. Then we have this cap. Then we have this beanie for three frames. And then we have nothing. Okay, so let's continue on. Paste the driver. Edit the driver. And this is the third hat. So let's subtract by three. And the rest is all the same. And then let's copy this driver, paste it in here. And now it's, it's just going to loop through all these hats. One more to go. Let's paste it in here as well edit and then subtract four because it's the fourth cap fourth hat and we copy it and we paste it in and that's all we need to do so first two frames we have nothing and we have this cap and we go through all the caps for three frames each and then the next material um, comes in and we go through the same loop for every single material. All right, that is our hats. Um, and if this was confusing, uh, you might want to just uh, copy and paste the driver that I'm using and play with the settings to see what's going on. But it's pretty much, you take the frame, you slow it down with a factor of three. So instead of changing every one frame, it changes every three frames. So every hat lasts for three frames. That's that's one way to explain it. Every hat lasts for three frames. We offset it by two because this is the second hat. And then we want to repeat this um, every five times because we have five hats in total. That's kind of how this formula works. Okay, one more category to go, the glasses. Uh, we only have two glasses, um, but again, no glasses is also an option. Uh, and that's because, um, so, so that's three options, and that's why we want to we wanna have every hat last for three frames, because we want to have one frame with no glasses, one frame, one frame with the party glasses, and one frame with sunglasses for every hat shader combination. And that way we, we literally loop over every possible combination of shaders, hats, and glasses. All right, so let's see what we want to do here. Um, I'm going to start off with animating the... Let's turn off the viewport. I'm going to animate the, the viewport with a driver again. Uh, so let's add a driver and simply uh, remove this variable because we don't need it and just use a frame. And um, let's see. 
So what this does is, again, uh, when this value is zero, it will show the glasses. When it's anything uh, other than zero, it does not show the glasses. What do we want to do here? Um, again, I would like to start with no glasses, then show the party glasses, then show the sunglasses, and then repeat no glasses, party glasses, sunglasses. So this is going to be slightly simpler. Um, I'm going to add it to driver. And the first thing I want to do is I want to repeat this every three times. And a way to do that is to percent three. So instead of one, two, three, four, five, it will be um, well, instead of zero, one, two, three, four, five, it will be zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. All right. So what we have now is every time it's zero, we show this thing. So now zero, we show it, but on three, we show it again. And on six, we show it again and it repeats itself. So instead of showing it on uh, frame zero, I want to show it on frame one. So I have to offset this. Um, and an offset is simply subtracting uh, a value. So I'm going to subtract one. And I have to uh, put this in parentheses, I believe. Otherwise, we're going to just take the frame and subtract it by 1% 3. Um, but instead, we want to take the frame minus 1 and do and apply the percent on that entire thing. So now on frame one, we show these on frame zero, we don't on frame three, we don't and on frame four, we we show them again. Uh, and I want to just uh, copy this driver, paste it here. And I'm also going to paste it on my sunglasses. And now the sunglasses show at the same frames. And I want to offset this by another frame because this is our second pair of glasses. So I'm going to edit my driver. And instead of subtracting one, I'm going to subtract two. And that's all we need. So I'm going to copy this driver now, paste it in the render as well. And that should do it. And this literally loops through every single combination of shader, hats, and glasses. And if you now go ahead and render an animation, I'm going to do it now, but it will literally uh, render every single combination of your monkey or your avatar with various attributes and save it out as a PNG, depending on what your output settings are. And if I enable my render objects again, uh, you can see I also have this background. And yeah, let, let's just uh, pick one frame and render it out. Um, it's going to be pretty slow on my laptop here. Um, but this is pretty much what you're going to get. And you can now go ahead and render this as an animation and it will work. What you can also do is throw this into Blender Grid and it will work. All right, I hope that that uh, helps you um, understand how you can get something like this off the ground, how you can do this. It's a little bit complicated, a little bit mathy with the with the driver formulas that we uh, need to use. Um, I will also create a written version of this tutorial. So you can just see the formulas in written form and I can explain it a little bit better using text rather than rambling on about it in this video. Um, and yeah, that's it. Bye-bye.